Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another indie comic book review. Actually, we're pretty much on time. Um, yep. Got a lot of nice books this week. We've got eight digital books, or nine digital books from this week. Yep. Several physicals, and we have some from outside of this week. So, uh, the books that were released in this episode were released on... April 8, 2015. Second week of April. Yep. And... Before we get into this week's books, let's get into the two books that we've been discussing for the past um, episode. Me, past episode. You, past episode. Yep. And we're starting with Nightmare World, Volume 2, Chapters 3, three and, and four. 4. Yes, and the first one is called In, in My, My Darkest, Darkest Hour. Hour. Ooh, in stereo. So, um, mm -hmm. first off, uh, this book, uh, or this chapter actually... Talks about uh, this boy who goes to a bar and uh, he talks about his uh, dragon friend who lives in the cave. And he tells it to the guys while he's all drunk and everything. But uh, then he's like saying, you know, I gotta send you away because I told the guys about you and I know you don't understand me, but you have to go because I don't want nothing to happen to you. And uh, I thought that was a really sad uh, ending because mm -hmm. he had, you know, like, when you have something near you and then you have to send them away because of what these uh, stuff does to you when you're under the influence. Alright, the uh, next book is called No One Knows. And in No One Knows, uh, it talks about, uh, you know, this uh, girl who has a job at a, uh, a store of some type. Or I, I think it's like a, I don't know if it's like a uh, commercial thing or whatever. So she's having a problem with her boss, and this guy comes along and says, you know, everyone has a role to play. By the way, you know who that is, right? Yeah, that's... Uh, Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. Yeah, Mr. Reed actually appears in this book, and I thought that was really something. <laughs> so um, I don't think I ever got the guy's name of who it was, but basically he's the guy that solves problems, and then he basically tells the boss to give the woman her job back or else I guess there'd be uh, consequences and after that that's when he says that one has a role to play and helps the woman out so I thought that was really cool both stories the artwork was great and I'm I like really... the I like the guest appearance by uh, mystery yeah I, I thought maybe you'd like that uh, with the mystery and uh, yeah, that's basically uh, it about the book. I just don't want to give too much away because I want you guys to read it. Because Nightmare World Volume 2 has been really great so far. And, you know, I just want you guys to definitely go out there and get the uh, second volume trade paperback to see more for yourself. Because it's just really great and I'm enjoying it. And speaking of Tales of Mystery, yep, we're on Chapter 8 now. Mm-hmm. Chapter 8, Mr. Ree is hired by this homeless guy um, who is concerned for all of his other fellow homeless uh, friends who are somehow mysteriously being beheaded. Mm -hmm. And they don't know why, and he doesn't know why, but he basically hires Mr. Ree to um, find out who's doing it and put a stop to it. And um, while they're talking, they walk into an alley. It's happened again. We get introduced briefly to a woman named Thelma and a man called um, William. And apparently Thelma, is, the, this woman was the one that was doing the killing. He's looking to clean up uh, her mess. And Mr. E gets into a fight with William. William turns out to be a demon. But he's a lot stronger than uh, Mr. E um, originally thought. And uh, he kind of leaves Mystery alive, but he warns him. He says, it's fine if you want to deal with the petty demon, you know, the street level demons, uh, but stay out of the big leagues. And he wakes up, and basically that's it. Everybody, all the bodies have disappeared, and he's left in the alleyway by himself. And there's a, a, a small moment with the statue of, I forgot what this um, hero's name was. Um, Let me see that. Uh, the, the Joven, I believe it was. I don't know, but anyway, it ends What's with him looking at the here? statue saying, you didn't fare too well either, because obviously that person is dead, there. that hero is dead as well. This is a really good issue, um, a really good chapter, I should say. I liked it, and this is the first one where actually Mystery kind of 
didn't succeed in his mission. Will we be seeing Thelma and William later on? Maybe. I'm sure we're going to be seeing Promise again at some point throughout yeah, this book. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I really enjoyed this chapter. It was really good. I, I definitely enjoyed it. The artwork is still, it's the same as always. Really like the black and white uh, effect. Really good. I definitely recommend Tales of Mystery um, Volume 1. I can't wait to get into Carmageddon. Uh, as always, you guys know that the uh, Kickstarter was a success. So once we get the physical copies, I definitely hope I can get uh, the physical copy of Volume 1 so I can share it with you guys and show you guys some of the artwork in it. And then when Volume 2, when I get to Volume 2, I'll have the book so I'll be able to physically show you some artwork there. Uh, but that's it for outside of this week, so let's waste no time and get into this week's books. Yeah, the April 8th book, Storm with Archie Comics, Sonic the Hedgehog, issue number 271, Champions number 404. First off, off the back, I'm going to say the Champions series was really amazing and awesome. Like, this was definitely my favorite series that I was reading throughout numbers 1 through 4. So, long story short, from last time we have Sonic and Knuckles who are going off against each other while Breezy has her little plans of what she wants to do with the Chaos Emerald. And the artwork here is really awesome and spectacular as well. So we have the hooligans who uh, plan to uh, ruin the Sonic and Knuckles fight where Mel Sonic comes in to steal the Chaos Emerald so he could give it to, of course, Dr. Eggman. And Tails is the one that saves the day to take away the Chaos Emerald while Mel Sonic goes back to base to Dr. Eggman for repairs. We have a Honey and Breezy uh, talk about and the negotiations and I'll let and you guys will definitely have to read a book to find out about that. And then we get a uh, message from uh, Gregorius, who has a secret information for Sonic to end this whole nightmare. And it's going to be in the next story arc called um, Protector. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how uh, Protector is going to go, which probably might lead into World Unite, probably. And It'll end nice. and then probably lead. Yeah, That'll I'm waiting for free that. comic book day. I want to get issue zero. We must. That we got that world. That and a few other books. I'm I really want to grab. Um, yeah. Not too many because I'm not wasting money like Midtown yeah. did last year. But Champions one through four, definitely five out of five. Highest recommendation. Trade paperback comes out. Must get because it is just that awesome. This book definitely gets my book of the week. I love this first. Uh, I got the trade paperback of the first five issues. Reviewed this digitally. Now it's going physical. Birthright issue number six. So we are now in the second chapter of Birthright, so to speak. And Mikey and Brennan are still on the hunt for the rest of the wizards. And uh, Mikey's having a bit of a nightmare that kind of reaches back into the past where he basically um, gave in to Lore and turned on all of his friends so he can come back to Earth. And um, Brennan wakes him up from the nightmare. Um, we get a little bit more into Lore's character because Brendan actually asks uh, Mikey, uh, was Lore scary? And you actually get really to see much. Lore in the book. I'm, I, I had to. Oh. Can you grab that? Yeah, it's very graphic. And um, the father gets confronted by uh, the police because now his other son is gone. Um, they leave. There's a really nice moment finally between the mother and father. And then out of nowhere... These special agents come in, and the reason they're now there is because um, the father's son went from missing to now a threat, a national threat. Uh, then jumps back to Brennan and Mikey for the rest of the book. Brennan sees this red mass on Mikey's shoulder. I'm skipping all the dialogue. You guys just have to read it yourself. And Mikey uh, starts to train Brennan how to use a sword. It was, some like nice, a it was some nice stuff there. There's a scene with a bear. You have to see it for yourself. At one moment, it looks like it's going to be a really great moment, and then it kind of twists at the end. Really good stuff. And then you get this big twist with Whoa. the wizards, or the last of the, um, what are they called? Um, the wards. Uh, uh, two of the wards uh, conspiring that to prevent Lore, or the Chosen One, uh, who is being possessed by Lore, a.k.a. Mikey, uh, from getting to them. And let's not forget that Mikey's pregnant friend slash girlfriend is still somewhere out there. We didn't get to see her in this oh, issue, yeah, right. but I'm sure she's somewhere out there. And this is an excellent book. The dialogue is perfect. I don't want to spoil the dialogue. This is my favorite book right now um, from Image. 
Uh, let's see how Spawn fares next week. But I'm really loving Birthright. Since issue one, this has been an amazing journey of a hero who isn't really a hero. He is a fallen hero. So, or a failed hero, and he's still actually going. So I, I really am enjoying it, and I can't wait for the next issue. Artwork as well is really great. All right. Image of the Walking Dead, issue number 140. We get more uh, backstory about uh, Michonne with, uh, you know, with her Rick. putting, like, all the past behind and uh, talking with uh, Rick about it as well. <coughs> And then uh, we get, um, I forgot what his name was, I was trying to uh, poison uh, Maggie, uh, oh Gregory his name is. He's trying to say, but I didn't do that, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, it was all planted there and yada yada yada, all that stuff. Then they go into talking about Carl, where he's been and how they're going to tell Rick and Maggie's like saying, you know, Carl's on his, role, his own now and Rick Grimms is leasing my problems right now. So we go to uh, the uh, group where Carl is with, uh, oh, I forgot what her name was already, Olivia, and uh, the Walkers, and they have their own camp there where uh, Carl was really unaware about that, and they're just trying to find out about, um, you know, how they can find Carl and, <clears throat> and everything else in the book. Uh, there's a really awesome, uh, twist at the end, actually. We get the, remember the groups that were there, you know, that was going to be question and everything? We took a little trip to where Negan, uh, prison was. I'm going to spoil this ending. Thinking that they closed the door for Negan? It opened up again. So, guess who's free? Negan. The ever-so-swearing Negan is going to return in this book. Well, you had to know he wasn't going to stay a prisoner forever. Yeah, if but he, he got his hair cut again and everything. I'm like saying, wait a minute, he's going to come back out, right? And then all of a sudden, that answered my question. So we're going to be seeing Negan a lot sooner, probably in all-out war again. Who knows? Grim Fairy Tales 109, however, uh, shows a little bit more of Wolf. Wolf is now in a different school, in Oz, I believe. And uh, Haley is having dreams about him. And... This person named Natalie. We don't know who that person is at the beginning of the book. And I want to know if anybody else had this problem. Apparently some of my pages have this blue tape with them. And I asked you if your book came with the blue tape. I don't know I where don't so. that came from. But we find out who Natalie is. It turns out um, when we're seeing Wolf in his new school, it turns out Natalie is um, a fellow student that Wolf is kind of crushing on. And uh, we get introduced to uh, Gretel, who is the person on the main cover. I'm not using the main cover. I have the um, Alex uh, Kotkin um, uh, with lots of different names. I have cover C, basically. Let's put it that way. So Wolf gets in trouble for messing around with Natalie. And um, we also get introduced to one of his friends. I forget what his name is. Um, oh, shoot. Why does his name leave me? Shoot. Who? Which one? His friend. Jack Ross? Is it? No. But anyway, his friend lets him out. Uh, he's put in the chamber. It's kind of like a punishment for what he did. And uh, this guy lets him out because there's a party going on. When they get to the party, however, though, Something is attacking Natalie, and that's the dream that uh, Haley actually had. I'm gonna hold this it goes back a little bit to the other school with Sky and um, oh, the what's her name's daughter? Uh, Hallie? Not Haley, the other one. Um, Callie, yes. Yeah, Callie. Um, Callie and Sky, and Callie actually found the convergence, which is underneath the school, which is all the magic. She overheard Sela talking about it. The rest of the book is Wolf fighting um, Gretel. I, that's what it, she's called at least. Uh, that's what it's called at least uh, by the end of the book. And um, Gretel ends up leaving with uh, a necklace that was attached to Natalie, which apparently holds some type of magical significance. 
And I'm not going to spoil the ending, but let's just say in Gretel Stead, something is coming uh, back and is looking for revenge. I like how Pat Chan's been doing stories as two part, uh, two issue stories, not really exceeding too much so we can enjoy the story for what it is, but all of them are actually connected. One goes right after the other, goes right after the other. So even though they're different stories, they're still part of a whole um, chapter of Grim Fairy Tales. So Grim Fairy Tales, since issue 100, it's just one long running story, but with several different chapters. And Beowulf is definitely uh, looking to be an awesome chapter for Wolf. Maybe Wolf will be coming back to the school. Maybe. We'll see if he rejoins Arcane Acre. Uh, in the next issue, but it looks like he's in a bit of trouble, that's for sure. And maybe CeeLo will show up to save him. Alright, and we're going to conclude uh, the physical Xenoscopes. Uh, White Queen, issue 3 of 3. And uh, White Queen, uh, I thought the last issue uh, turned out to be really awesome. It's uh, Callie going up against uh, Trickster. And uh, basically... Oh, it's not Callie then. Her daughter is a different name. Violet. Violet. It was Violet from Grim Fairy Tales. Oh, I thought it was Callie. Oh, my mistake. It looked like... In the, Too many whatever. names to memorize. Right. So, it's just a whole fight just against the Trickster, and the White Queen, I mean, doesn't kill her, but she basically gets the upper hand to now go up against uh, the Dark Queen, who has uh, Violet in her uh, possession, and uh, she really... Uh, Smart talks the Dark Queen. I'm like saying, finally, somebody steps up to her for once. And for Callie to step up to her, go Callie. So uh, she's like trying to get into the Dark Queen's head, like saying, I know your past. They give a uh, See Wonderland Age of Darkness one shot as a uh, reference. And the Dark Queen has the locket, which has all of uh, the. Uh, it belonged to Violet, and it was like very important that it can't be crushed or anything else. So uh, Violet tries to help out during the fight a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna spoil it right now. And uh, both the White Queen, Callie, and Violet uh, looks like they're both dead. Well, during. The Age of Darkness. During the Age of Darkness, yeah. And the Dark Queen, of course, she gets away. Because the Clash of the Queens came in. They could have ended her right there. But she gets away. I, I just hate the Dark Queen so much. You know, I've, I've said this over and over again. Someone's got to get her really good. They will. I, I am waiting to see that. Because no I will no get a poster more. and I will frame it on this wall. Alright, we're going into Boom Studios <sighs> now. And we're starting with Bill and Ted's Most Triumphant Return, issue 2 of 6. How was yes. this issue, Michael? Wait, let me just show the cover. So the whole issue of uh, the second issue was just both Bill and Ted trying to help out Nicholas, who is on the verge of killing Bill and Ted, you know, because of um, you know him being like all alone and not having friends and stuff like that. So they want to help him prevent him from killing both of uh, Bill and Ted themselves, obviously. So he has this girl he falls in love with, and he's trying to say, look, we can help you, just tr just please don't kill us, and if it doesn't work out, then you can. They're basically trying to prevent the uh, past to not affect them in the future, because they're in the future now. So, uh, and we see the two robots, the Bill and Ted robots, so... Um, you know, it was like a really fun-filled issue. And the second story just talks about Bill and Ted's mother um, and the father, like how they uh, met each other, which was really, uh, not to put it in the whole uh, disco way, kind of funky, the way they met each other. And uh, yeah, you definitely have to read the book. I wasn't really too crazy about the second story artwork. The first story artwork was really good, but the second story was a little eh. -heh. I thought the artwork was good. But anyway. It was a little sketchy, but I'm not saying it was good or bad. I'm just saying it was just a little sketchy, but it's good to read. All right, next we've got Escape from New York, issue number five. Yes, and this is a new story where uh, Snake is actually, well, he's going under a new name now when he gets to this uh, secret base. I believe it's in Russia. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Germany, that uh, he's in now. And he meets up with this guy's like saying, you know, uh, 
are you like which side you're fighting on? He's trying to tell him like he fights on his own side, so he knocks him out, and then he gets into this war where, uh, of course, the mission's not done yet, and he's just helping out the team just uh, with the whole war, and uh, then we get a little scene uh, afterwards where they're uh, at the army camp, and uh, I forgot what her name was, Sergeant, uh, the woman's name. Uh, Colonel... No, that's who she's talking about. Uh, I General Mellon? No. Alright, well, anyway. She comes in and then uh, she doesn't really get along with uh, Snake too well. But uh, he's just saying that uh, he's going to be the one responsible for helping the squad get come back alive. Because she's afraid that they're all going to die out there because... Basically, it's the whole thing about, uh, as talked about further on in the book, of uh, Russia invading uh, Germany, I believe. Like, it's someone invading somebody, but I think, I heard the words Russia invading something. So I think it was Germany, because that's the setting, like, it looks like that they're in. So, uh, and then they got uh, just a high orders about uh, to go to this meeting. Was it Major Kang? Probably was Major Kang. And the uh, commissioner is just talking about the whole thing about what's going on and who's invading what. And the president of that uh, story is really not doing as much about it to uh, for the soldiers. So uh, there's one guy that we saw in the um, beginning. In the beginning, he's like saying the president owes him a favor, and uh, he has something against uh, Snake. And uh, he wants to do it himself personally. So it, it's just a whole big, uh, like, you know, new story and everything. But once you read it, you'll really get interested. But I believe he landed in Germany. If I'm wrong, I I can't remember the where's anymore. It's just, I believe it was in Germany. All right. Next we have the legendary Green Hornet issue number three. Uh, the events of the series takes place after Legendary, a steampunk adventure. Minor note. So when last we left our hero, who pretends to be a villain, he was about to be destroyed by a gigantic clock in TikTok's <clears throat> cathedral. And TikTok ends up getting boarded. They run away. Kato finds a way to um, free himself and the Hornet. And... They get thrusted into this gigantic fight where um, the fearsome horde and the police are actually uh, on TikTok in TikTok's cathedral, and it's a huge fight. So they end up bolting, and then there's a scene that I'm not going to really go too far into, but it's with uh, Bit Re um, uh, Reed and um, I forgot what this other guy's name was, uh, Chesterfield. And they're talking, Cato is talking with this woman that he talked to in the very first issue, Miss Jensen, Kai Jensen. And I, you already get the feeling that there's something more to these two people. And we find out what in the end. It turns out um, the Prince of Murder or what, what does he go by? Lord Homicide, the little boy, mm -hmm. ends up calling the Green Hornet in. We get a little background actually on um, what was his name? The Murder King, how he died, and about his son, and how yeah, well, how he died. And then we get the epic fight between the Brass Hornet and the Green Hornet, and Kato versus the Brass Hornet's hmm. sidekick. The fight between uh, Kato and the Brass Hornet sidekick was a lot cooler, a lot more action, a lot more uh, martial arts involved, whereas with the Green Hornet, it's just fist flying head-butting, you know, punch-punch, and that's it. And then finally, Green Hornet gets Ooh. the helmet off, and guess what? It turns out Mae Jensen is the Brass Hornet. And there's a whole reason behind it. She is there because she wants to find her brother who disappeared after uh, being with the Veiled Lady. And you, you feeling it? The mm -hmm. team-up is going to happen. Oh. However, first they're going to have to get through Lord Homicide. And let me guess, that's to be continued. Oh. 
Yeah, so there's, if the Hornets and their sidekicks want to um, team up and find uh, May's brother, first they're going to have to fight Murder King's men. Awesome. Awesome. Love the artwork. This is a really That's great a tale of the Green Hornet. I'm, I, I love the steampunk version of uh, Green Hornet. All, All right, right, next, let's make sure the time is on our side. It is for one more issue. First issue, Frank Cho, Doug Murray, Jack Jadson. And you know why I noticed this? Because this is a character that was in the Wolverine series that Frank Cho Frank drew. Cho, yeah. Jungle Girl Season 3. Yeah. And it's the first issue. So, in this one, it just talks about, um, I want to get her name, Jana. Who is, uh, and her crew are fighting off against these weird mutant animals. And we don't know where they came from. Like, they just appeared out of nowhere. But we find out as the issue continues. So, I will explain that. Um, and they're just trying to figure out, like, uh, where these mutant animals are coming from. And how they could take them down. Because danger has come throughout the whole land. And it's up to Janna and her, uh team just to help them out. And the artwork I feel in this book was really good. I love it. I, 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 I love Frank Cho's art. And uh, you know there's many uh, I like how Jan has strategic ways of how to take them out in this book. Like that's what I really liked about it because it's all about teamwork and everything. So as the issue keeps continuing after all fight, 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 fight this and let's do this, do that with some characters who are, or well, one character that's being a little bit weird. We found out that there's a flying saucer or UFO, so that I would say, that is appearing over the land. Looks and, like a satellite more. Well, satellite or something like that. Well, they say flying saucer, so I'll right. be flying saucer. And what it is is that there's a visitor there that has been uh, coming to Earth, and there's a person, uh, Val, Bill, I think her, his name was, that talks about, you know, how that uh, UFO satellite thing is the one that's causing all these mutant animals to cause war and now more is gonna come in the next issue or next name death from beyond space so that's really interesting and I was really interested in the book to be honest alright guys now give us just two seconds and we will be right back at the click of a button alright we're back Reanimator, issue number one. You were oh, really enjoying this book. You were talking. I really enjoyed Reanimator. And what it's about, it's um, Susan Green, who we get introduced to first as her character, who used to like steal and whatnot, and she gets into trouble. Then this awesome scientist comes in by the name of Herbert West. And uh, at first I thought he was a little bit of a creepy character, but I actually got to liking him. Like, he's all like maniacal and does like all these uh scientific stuff along with uh what's been going on with humans turning into like these zombie-esque uh people and uh what i liked about him is that he had this laboratory where he was doing an experiment of a certain serum to help the humans and his blood with the whole demons and stuff like that like i thought that was really interesting to read about so one of the experiments he was working on uh, turned out to be a little bit out of control with uh, muscular-like. <laughs> well, he had a Cthulhu mask. And uh, there was a meeting that he has with everyone under his control. And uh, what it was about was um, just a bunch of, you know, like... He's going to be introduced as the issues continue, so you'll have to read the book to uh, see about that. So, um... There was like these this mutant creature that looked like half turtle, half lobster, or the fe the feature of what it looked like. Then there was a picture that Susan Green found about where her father was dead, and guess who was in the picture? Herbert West, who witnessed her father was dead. So that's gonna cause conflict. Love the book, the way it was just the whole thing. It was amazing. I was really hooked definitely going to get the next issue and I would say it's the best digital book. Okay, this Masks 2. Yep. Issue number 1. Different people this time. The Shadow yeah. stayed and Green Hornet stayed. And also the Spider. Oh, the Spider's in it also? Mm -hmm. The Spider's in it also. Okay. Yeah, so uh starts off where uh, the Shadow 
Green Hornet and uh, Kato. I think Kato. Yeah. Are, That's Kato. Yeah, Kato. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are uh, you know they're fighting crime against the street, and uh, it's about the skull that uh, they're trying to oh, against the skulls. I'm sorry, who are uh, causing riot over the city. One of the two uh, members of the skull gets away, and you know the shadow knows all. Ha ha ha! Creepy laugh. I mean, I love the shadow. I mean, you gotta admire the character. Uh, he goes after them, and uh, Green Hornet and uh, Ko help out as well. Then we get introduced to the other team. Who uh, is uh, coming in? Which were Black, Black, Black Terror. Terror, the Spider, and um, I, I can't remember who the others were. No, it's down further. Well, they get the Skull Crew, and um, they uh, bring uh, justice uh, as well to them. And um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, There's the a Spider, spider um, Green, Llama Green Llama, and Eau Claire. Yeah, Eau Claire is... Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Uh, not Eau Claire. I, I saw the name under it. That was Lady, Lady Satan. Satan. Yeah, sorry. we get a little... I saw Eau Claire eyewear. I thought no. that was part of like, the intro Yeah, Eau Claire. Part. Yeah. But it's Lady Satan who comes in. We get a little bit about her character to know who she is. But I was glad to see the spider back because it's been a really long time since I've read the spider. The artwork is gorgeous. The artwork's amazing. Definitely. And uh, the reason why there's like a group together is because there is a... Uh, a ball that's happening and uh, they want to investigate what's going on there and it's like a costume party and Shadow used the ring to get in uh, willy-nilly and the Green Hornet's already there so he like beat him right to it I thought that was uh, really funny not, 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 not the imposter the other one yeah it was an imposter Green Hornet costume so they're just looking around seeing about why the skull people are, are there for what reason and uh, Let's just say um, it has something to do with the Red Death that they're going to use. Like this uh, smoke-like thing that could turn these people into like demons and whatnot. If that makes any sense. So uh, that's going to be a really good book. I like how the Shadows team up with more people like we had with uh, the uh, previous book. The uh, Protectors, Inc. and stuff yep. like that. Yep. And now we have it in Max too. Like I really, really like how the Shadows being in more team-up books, even though Green Hornet's not against the whole killing. Yeah. Because, you know, that's how the way it is. But, you know, I just like that he's in more books, team-up. Now, the only IDW book this week is actually Edward Scissorhands, issue mm -hmm. number six. Yep. And in Edward Scissorhands, uh, it continues on where we left off uh, last time, but this is like a new story arc, by the way. And, uh... There we go, okay. Yeah. So, uh... Uh, what's her name? Uh, Meg. Uh, you know, with Edward, and Edward sees this reality show that could help out people who are uh, who don't like to see themselves as not normal. Edward Scissorhands, for example, who has long hand, the claws. He wants just to be a normal person. So uh, Meg is just uh, trying to, uh, you know, try to get Edward to stay away from seeing that because it's. There, there might be a trick up their sleeves, and we got a little bit of a background story of Meg's uh, grandmother, because the mother actually found the book uh, of what Meg found issues back, and uh, she wants to read the book, but she obviously was looking at it for hours. She forgot to pick up her door from school, but don't worry, she got a lift from a special friend of uh, Edward's. So uh, she goes to the house and sees that he's been addicted to that uh, Change Your Life show, or whatever that show is called. And, uh, you know, the mother's just there seeing that there's a camera crew and everything. And basically, it looks like that Edward's going to try to have his life changed, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But I smell something very, very weird to come for Edward Scissorhands oh, in wow. trying to change his life, because... Something about that show doesn't really... You know how you get that instinct feeling like you, it's fishy? Mm -hmm. I kind of see it as fishy. Or I could be wrong. And hey, I, I've been proven wrong a couple of times before. I'm right, so we'll be and the first. finally this week, we have Rye issue number eight. Yes. It's really awesome artwork here, too. And in Rye issue number eight, it's still about Rye with his mission in Japan and trying to kill Father because of... Uh, 
what he's been turned into. And there was another machine called Rye uh, VIII. I think that's uh, five, uh, eight. Mm -hmm. Something about Rye Eight and the creation of Rye Eight that Father created. So there's just like a little bit of a uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a uh, conversation between Rye and uh, this old guy. I forgot what his name was. Oh, you have to read the book to find out what it was about. But it's really just about his mission just to kill Father because of uh, the whole uh, experiment of what happened. Oh wait, go up, 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 up. I want to see what his name is. Uh, XI. Rai meets up with a robotic XI, which was Father's creation, and they fight each other. And it turns out to be a really intensive fight. And uh, it's televised throughout the world. Yeah, it's actually televised of the whole world to see because uh, of there's like a war going on. So I guess that's why it's all televised and everything. Uh, I was really amazed at the artwork, by the way, um, in this story. And. Uh, that's really the whole thing. Like, uh, XI almost tries to uh, kill Rai, but Rai gets the upper hand and just uh, wins against uh, XI. Or so it seems it looks like. So, you know, he's still on his mission just to, uh, like I kept saying, just destroy Father. Something tells me he's going to meet up with Rai 8. I don't know why, but I think that might happen, and it's going to return in August? Yep. Oh, wow. Issue 9, it'll be in August. That's a long So, we're way. not going to be seeing it till the end of the summer, wow. just in time for episode 300 of the comic review show. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh... So, Rye is taking a break till we hit 300, I guess. All right. So until then, everybody, that's the end of this show. So as always, don't forget to check out Comic Related, Comic Frontline Zone 4 Podcast, and Frontline Gaming Zone. Together we are your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. The countdown hopefully will be tomorrow. You're seeing this Monday morning, Monday afternoon. Hopefully we will have all the Convergence books read. It will probably be going back under the title review because I there is no way I could put a hierarchy for a mini event series, a mini-series in an event. So, <clears throat> we're probably going to go back to the review title, uh, or we'll, it'll be a review, but under the title countdown, but it really won't be a countdown. Uh, I'll explain at the beginning of the show. It'll take up like a minute of your guys' time in the review, but uh, as soon as we get all the books read, the half for him, half for myself, and uh, also the Marvel books we have, uh, the countdown will be up. Countdown slash review. So until then, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and we'll see you guys in the next review. Bye, everybody.